This is Cuba today, a country on the move but still in the shadow of Fidel Castro. Fidel is retired at 82 and very sick. His brother Raul is five years younger and he's slowly retooling the communist government. He's reaching out to meet world leaders and says he wants to negotiate better relations with the United States. He has also given Cuba's 11 million people unprecedented access to computers and to cell phones, but very few can afford it. Change is in the air. Young people are speaking out, and some are pushing the limits of protest. Laying down tracks in a makeshift studio overlooking Havana, the rap group Anonimo Consejo, Anonymous Advice, dares to criticize racism and police harassment. From the beginning, our idea in performing hip hop was to create protest music the kind of music that would attract every element in our society. We should speak out clearly. People should say exactly what they mean and always defend their beliefs. And Cubans are willing to speak up for the first time in years. They complain about the price and quality of food and their ability to find a good doctor. This is the scene on the Avenue of the Presidents, where young people cruise and meet up with friends. We almost have no doctors in the hospitals these days. I see that they're sending doctors and teachers to other countries, but we're here. We, did, we didn't spend uh, five, five years of, of college in vain. You know, someday this is going to have to change. But how much change and when? Rafael Hernandez, the editor of Temas magazine, says public criticism could be part of a gradual reform process. I think that Cuba has already changed a lot in the last 10 years. In what way? In many ways. Cuba is much more diverse, more, much more pluralistic, not only in terms of social groups, but in terms of political expressions, in terms of ideas, in terms of the public sphere, in terms of uh, public participation. The changes sweeping Cuba these days aren't just political. Cuba is undergoing major economic reform. The country has new joint ventures with Canada and Brazil, and European developers have put up new hotels and resorts. Meanwhile, people in Havana benefit from an agreement that put fancy new Chinese buses on city streets last year. They used to wait for cramped tractor trailers, which now have been sent to the countryside. Cuban farmers are among the big beneficiaries of recent reforms. Just last month, the government issued 45,000 permits for new private farms. Those new farmers join old timers like Juan Antonio Perez, whose family has worked this land in Havana province for four generations. Can fruta también? He grows sweet potato, tomatoes, corn, and bananas. And he makes a tidy profit selling the harvest to the government. As far as the government is concerned, I own my own land, and they respect me for it. I'm living off the land, and I'm a happy man. He may be, but in many ways, Cuba is still stuck in the past. While the socialist system provides free health care, schooling, and subsidized housing, Cubans have little ability to raise their standard of living. The government sets all wages and pays doctors, lawyers, teachers, and scientists often little more than $20 a month. Life is still hard for most Cubans. Ration card in hand, they have the chance to buy most of the basics, some rice, some beans, cooking oil, six eggs, and a pound of chicken. That's per person and they're supposed to make it last for an entire month. So very few Cubans have the cash to buy luxury items, let alone those computers and cell phones that the government now says they can have. Slowly but surely though, as government reforms take hold, more and more Cubans are starting their own businesses. Hey, one dollar, two dollar, three dollar. They open restaurants and private homes and take odd jobs that cater to growing numbers of foreign tourists. Of course, 
There are those in Cuba who still defend the old ways. Es el artista que... es un artista. Pablo Armando Fernandez, a beloved poet, says those who criticize the country hold it to impossible standards. Well, Cuba is not heaven. Why do we have to ask Cuba what we don't ask to all the countries who are wealthy? This is a poor country. An explanation that may not be good enough for a generation craving big changes. They have a message for the old generation. The revolution happened and you made the change, but we have to keep changing. Things can't be left frozen the way they are. I'm Peter Eisner, World Focus in Havana.